Going to clean the kitchen, huh? Yep. With that ordinary cleaner? It's an ammonia cleaner. Wait, it still only does part of the job. It may get the dirt, but not the germs. Try new Lemon Saw. It's a cleaner and disinfectant. See, Lemon Saw does the whole job. It cleans, kills germs, even germs that cause odors. And smells good, too. Right, Lemon Saw fresh. So why do part of the job when new Lemon Saw cleans, disinfects, and smells good? Tonight at 6 on TV 12, enjoy part one of Walt Disney's hilarious comedy, My Dog the Thief. Dwayne Hickman and Mary Ann Mobley star in this nutty story about a kleptomaniac St. Bernard and his bumbling partner, an airborne news reporter. At 7, singer Tom Jones stars in Pleasure Cove, a tale of romance and crime at a posh island resort. Shelley Fabres and Harry Gardino guest star. At 9, Tom Snyder hosts Primetime Sunday. Walt Disney, Pleasure Cove, and Primetime Sunday, tonight on TV 12. There's a funny thing about the good life. Sometimes it can all seem pointless, with no direction or purpose. Most of us need to know where we're headed and why. We need guidelines that point us in the right direction. The Bible provides these guidelines to those who take time to study it. Join a Bible study group and find guidance for the good life. Summer is the greatest season, and Judy Stout Shop is filled with the lightest and brightest of Sunday day things. You'll find the looks you like in elegant long dresses for summer weddings, or try a casual look in bright summer prints and salads. New shades, new fashions, great looks in size 14 and a half to 26 and a half and 14 to 52. For you, from Judy Stout Shop. Get rid of those undressed blues. Come on down and get a load of the news. Be the one dressed right by Judy Stout Shop. Tonight at 6 on TV 12, enjoy part one of Walt Disney's hilarious comedy, My Dog the Thief. Dwayne Hickman and Mary Ann Mobley star in this nutty story about a kleptomaniac St. Bernard and his bumbling partner, an airborne news reporter. At 7, singer Tom Jones stars in Pleasure Cove, a tale of romance and crime at a posh island resort. Shelley Fabres and Harry Gardino guest star. At 9, Tom Snyder hosts Primetime Sunday. Walt Disney, Pleasure Cove, and Primetime Sunday, tonight on TV 12. Don't have a trashy construction site. Much of our litter comes from demolition and construction sites. When you see this happening, be a good citizen and ask them to put it in the can. Litter is a problem that affects everyone, so it will take all of us working together to clean Montgomery. Keep your construction site clean at all times. A public service message from the Montgomery Clean City Committee. For further information or to file a complaint, call 269-1204. This week on Wild Kingdom, Marlin observes marine biologists as they train porpoises to be used as underwater couriers. Wild Kingdom, Monday night at 6.30 on TV 12. This is WSFA, TV 12, Montgomery. From Alabama's News Center, the WSFA TV News Sunday Report with Norman Lumpkin, Mac Carmack, and Phil Snow. Good evening on this Sunday. Tragic accidents top the news for here in Alabama. At least eight persons are dead so far this July weekend. A single plane crash near Huntsville, Alabama took the lives of five persons near Huntsville at the Redstone Arsenal and traffic, traffic accidents took the rest. Authorities say Patricia Shavera of Troy, Alabama died late yesterday in a collision involving her pickup truck and a train. The 31-year-old Miss Severa was killed when her vehicle slammed into the side of a Seaboard Railroad coastline train in the Youngblood community of Western Pike County. Other road deaths occurred in Lee and Jefferson counties. Montgomery police made short work of an armed robbery this afternoon about, at about 2.39. A lone black male entered the Magic Mart on Woodley Road, pulled a sawed-off shotgun, and demanded the money. The suspect fled in a late model green station wagon driven by a female. About eight minutes later, the vehicle was spotted and a chase ensued. During that, that chase, the shotgun was thrown from the car. It's discharged, but the shot went into the ground. The suspects were stopped and arrested at Boltier and Fairview Avenues here in Montgomery. The identities of the st suspects have not been released to the news media so far. The week ahead here in Alabama is expected to produce some important news events. It's, it's affecting most of us here in Alabama beginning with a PSE hearing on a rate hike request by the South Central Bell Telephone Company. 
Bell has asked for $45 million in increases. The price hikes would cause increases in residential, business, pay phones, service connections, and in-state long-distance telephone calls. Off-campus programs in Alabama, here of, in Alabama's institutions, rather, will be under review this coming week by the State Commission on Higher Education. If the projects are found not measuring up to standards set by the state, they could be eliminated. And tomorrow at Oneona, Alabama, two Birmingham, Alabama men will go on trial for the double murder of a Blunt County farmer and his wife. The accused men, 19-year-old Arthur Lee Giles and 26-year-old Aaron Jones, will have separate trials and separate courtrooms at the Blunt County Courthouse. In world and national news this weekend, President Carter is still in the news. The White House Chief of Staff Hamilton Jordan said today, the cabinet must be loyal to the president or little can be accomplished in Washington. Jordan also defined his new role in the Carter administration while speaking on NBC's Meet the Press. The cabinet members will report to the president. I will not stand between the cabinet members and the president. The president does not want that, will not allow it. I will not even stand between myself and my colleagues on the senior staff. My job will be to try to manage and run the White House staff in a more effective manner. Once the president makes a decision on a policy, on a piece of legislation, it is the responsibility and the obligation of the people in that government to either support that policy or action or to leave the government. We have not had the degree of cohesion in the White House and in the cabinet that this president deserves and badly needs. One of my chief responsibilities in this new position will be to work out a closer and better relationship between the White House staff and the cabinet. We can only succeed by working together. The political picnics are underway in Iowa this weekend with prominent Republicans boosting themselves and friends into the 1980 presidential spotlight. It might have been the weather, or it might have been the ticket price of only $10 for a good-sized steak dinner. But Iowa Republicans turned out in droves for their political picnic, and so did the men who were trying to make a name for themselves in the national organization. He's going to be coming every month, three times of three, three days out of every month to Iowa. Wow. My mom's coming, I'm coming. We know how important it is, so we'll be here. George Bush was one of the candidates who couldn't make it tonight. Two of the other major candidates who did make the picnic were Senator Howard Baker and Congressman Philip Crane. And so why impose new taxes on consumers at a time when prices are con uh, going to continue to go up? Uh, I think what we should be providing is tax cuts. Ronald Reagan's people were there, and supporters of John Conley vied for their share of the conservative vote from another corner of the grounds. But despite the range of candidates, there was a spirit of unity in the air, a general feeling that these are a people who are ready to make a move. The Republican Party in 1980 is going to have a wealth of candidates from which to choose. George Bush, John Conley, Ronald Reagan, Bob Dole, Phil Crane, John Anderson, let me tell you something. Any one of those men is better on a bad day than Jimmy Carter is on his back. For NBC News, Leo Sabaja, Des Moines. And on the local scene, police at this moment are searching for a Montgomery man in his 30s who allegedly shot his brother this afternoon. Police say Willie Dove Freeman of 1283 North McGonough Street allegedly shot his brother Wilbert at their home less than an hour ago. The victim was transported to St. Margaret's Hospital in critical condition with a gunshot wound to the upper chest. Paramedics at the scene said the bullet could have punctured a lung. The victim's brother left the scene of the shooting and police say the incident may be the result of a family dispute. galaxy of great movie stars coming this fall. You'll see the brightest stars in the biggest box office bonanzas. You'll see heroes of the past and of the future. The roughest and the toughest. We've got them all. Have a ball. This fall, see why we're NBC proud as a peacock. On our segment about energy in the news this weekend, 
we have several stories about the situation. The push is on to develop an alternative energy, such as synthetic fuel. One such way is from coal, as John Rawlings reports. Synthetic fuel from coal has been an on-again, off-again idea since the 1940s. President Carter's new energy program, though, marks the first time an administration has given its full backing. For Kentucky, the country's biggest producer of coal, the president's new direction signals the payoff to a big gamble. Seven years ago, the state government made a unique commitment to research with this energy center. If Congress will support the, uh, the president, we feel that that goal is reachable. Coal has been gasified and liquefied for a number of years. There are new technologies being developed, and we are very confident that these can be brought on stream by the late 1980s, early 1990s. Even though the know-how for synthetics has been around, more research is needed to get it to where Carter wants it. That's what's going on here. Since the early 70s, millions of tax dollars have been used to learn how to pipeline coal long distances, or in this case, microscopically isolate the polluting and waste parts of coal. The state has also gone outside the lab to help build small conversion plants but the costs are staggering. The price of this one is over a quarter billion dollars, almost twice the projection. There are other problems. Critics charge the stepped up mining needed for synthetics will threaten the environment. And synthetic fuels is not a short term solution to our energy problems. It hopefully will play a role in the long term solution. John Rollins for NBC News in Louisville. Rising crude oil prices have revived interest in oil wells in this country that were shut down because of cost. Larry Morse has details on that. Ten years ago, this oil field in central Michigan was all but abandoned. The old oil wells were pumping $5 a barrel oil, and the owners weren't making much money. But now that's all changing. Following President Carter's announcement to deregulate the oil industry earlier this year, independent oil developer Ed Brem, who has been in the oil business for a half a century, has signed a two and a half million dollar contract to drill a dozen wells. The new wells are pumping $13 a barrel oil. And if the regulations are lifted, Brem will be paid the